Hello, I'm Steve from Strongman Tools. This video has been designed to help our customers who've purchased the Strongman Clifton Platform Scissor Lift install it at home with the minimum of fuss. Clifton lifts weigh 585 kilos all in, so it's always best to employ the correct handling equipment such as a forklift truck. We can load you up using forklifts if you bring a trailer to our place, however the majority of customers will not have this luxury. If you're receiving your Clifton lift at home, it's likely it will be delivered on the back of a truck with a tail lift and then moved into your garage using a standard pallet truck. Once it's on the floor, you'll need to cut the banding and you and a friend can begin to unpack the lift. First of all, start by opening up the controller box. Take care when you're removing the tabs. The metal is fairly flexible, but some people may prefer to wear gloves. As in everything when we're unpacking and installing the Clifton lift, take your time. There's no need to rush. Start with the top panel. Remove this. Take out the mats and the manual that you can see and then proceed to gradually remove the remaining rubber blocks, freeing up the controller so that you can remove it from the packing case. Then you'll be presented with the controller itself, four rubber lifting blocks, four mats, and the manual. Please take the time to read the manual through and also watch all of this video before you attempt to unpack and install your lift. The method of unpacking and installing the lift that we're showing you here is guidance for those customers at home who don't, as we've said, have a forklift. We think that you probably will have access to these tools, for example, a couple of trolley jacks, a crowbar, a hammer and suitable screwdrivers. The lift will have been delivered on a pallet truck, so it'll be up in the air. The way to get this off without the use of a forklift will be to carefully employ two people with a couple of trolley jacks. Raise the lift packing case off the pallet Watch out as you remove the pallet, keep the packing case balanced. Using the rubbers which came from the pack itself, place these next to the trolley jack and lower the unit onto the ground. Using one trolley jack, remove the rubber blocks, lower the unit to the floor and with a crowbar you should be able to quite easily get product down onto the floor. Now we can remove the top getting access to the lift and accessories contained within. When you've opened your box, you'll find inside the lift itself, the up ramps packaged neatly, and that the cable and hose assembly is nicely protected and it's important to be really careful when you remove the packaging around this. And then as we did before, carefully removing the tabs to allow us to get access to the main unit. Before we can move the lift onto the garage floor, 
we've first got to raise it because it's bolted to the packing case. We've got to power up the lift to be able to raise it off the packing case and unbolt it from the bottom of that box. Carefully detach the hose assembly. This contains the hydraulic hose, three sensor cables and an airline. The first thing to do is to attach the sensor cables. You'll note that there's two three-pin plugs. One of them has been identified by the use of a cable tie. Carefully locate and attach the electrical connections. And now do the same with the 6mm airline. Firmly fix this to the splitter and tighten. Finger tight should be OK as far as the airline is concerned. Now attach the hydraulic hose. This is attached with the union to the splitter block. When you're tightening, please be very careful that the actual hose union remains straight on to the block. Now remove the faceplate of the controller. Inside you have an oil reservoir, a motor and pump unit, and the electronics to control the lift. Just spend a couple of minutes making sure that all the unions are firmly attached and that there's no loose wires or connections that you can see. Now we need to fill the reservoir with hydraulic oil. Please make sure, as you can see here in the picture, that the funnel you use has a piece of gauze or a filter. We don't want impurities in the reservoir. We're using 6 litres of ISO 32 hydraulic oil. As you'll know, our lifts are single phase. They can be run from the home power supply, but you will require a 16 amp motor rated breaker. That's a 16 amp C or D type breaker. We terminate our cable with a 16 amp C form male connector. At home, you'll need a 16 amp C form female socket to be able to plug in the lift. To comply with CE legislation, our lifts use a passive safety system remotely operated. And in this demonstration, the compressor that we're using comes from our super silent oil free range. You'll need an 8mm push fit airline connection on your compressor to be able to connect to the lift. This is the control panel of the lift. You'll note it's quite simple. We've got a power light which illuminates when the power is turned on, an up, a down, and a lock button. The up button is self explanatory. Press it, and the motor turns. The pump operates and the lift will raise. As you can hear, the locks are clicking into position. As the lift raises, the locks will drop into position. You'll be able to hear them clicking in. This happens every few inches. Now we've raised the lift, we can get access to the mounting bolts. These are used to keep the lift secure when it's being transported, but they need to be removed now to get the lift onto your garage floor. The Clifton Lift is a mobile product. This includes the two mobility wheels and a swan neck movement handle. The wheels will be attached to a bracket on each of the scissor arms. When you lower the lift, the wheels will poke out through the cutout sections 
raising the equipment off the floor. Now use the swan neck handle to move the lift off the packaging. Again, you may like to employ a friend to help, as in this case with a strop. You'll now have the lift on your garage floor. You'll be able to position it and then remove the movement wheels. We can now attach the up ramps. Remove the circlips from the up ramp shafts. What you've got is a top and a bottom shaft. The up ramps on the Clifton lift can be locked into position and be load bearing. This extends the usable wheelbase. Ensure the handle on the locking plate is sticking out to the side. The shaft of the locking plate is inserted and then the shaft for the main up ramp can be located into position. Please ensure you carefully replace the circlips. The up ramps will normally be employed in the down position as is being demonstrated here. We're now going to take you on a quick tour of the safety systems of a Clifton lift. You can see here on either base plate the locking ratchet system. On the ratchet you'll notice a couple of air actuators. These will raise the lock covers when the down button is pressed. To ensure the lift will only safely lower when both locks have been raised, there are two safety switches located behind the actuators. First of all, you can see there's a limit switch that cuts out the motor when the lift has reached its maximum height. You've also got a sensor switch for the two-stage down system, which we'll talk about in a second. But don't do it too tightly. You can tidy up the hose and cable assembly by employing a couple of cable ties. Clifton lifts have been designed to operate freestanding. They can safely raise up to 3,000 kilos evenly distributed. Please ensure that the work surface is a smooth, level and cured concrete floor. Drive the vehicle over and then locate the jacking points of the vehicle, carefully placing the lifting rubbers in position. As you can see, the up ramps can be locked into position to safely extend the usable wheelbase. When first raising the vehicle, check to see that all four wheels are leaving the ground at the same time. This means that your vehicle is nicely balanced on the lift. When you've raised the lift to the required height, press the lock button and the ramps will lower onto the mechanical safety locks. To lower the lift, use the down button. Initially, turn it to the first position. The lift will rise. This is to ensure that the locks are clear. The ramp will now descend. It'll stop just clear of the floor when you need to turn the button from the first to the second position to ensure that the lift is lowered completely. I hope that was useful. If you've got any problems, feel free to give us a call. Otherwise, we'll see you again with the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.